I'm Sarah A. Crispin, the author of the Tales of Chetsumoka, and today I'm going to show you how to make the meringued coffee recipe from 1899 that appears at the back of Three Women a Wheel. As fans of my books, I'm sure you've noticed that at the end of each one there are appendices that give you further information. These mostly serve the same function that a bibliography would in a non-fiction book, and they also have recipes as well for the foods that, are, that the characters are eating in the stories. And these recipes all come from our 19th century cookbooks. Today I'm going to show you one that appears at the end of Three Women a Wheel, and that originally appeared in the 1899 cookbook, The Queen of the Household. It's for meringued coffee, also known as coffee with whipped cream, one of my favorites, and Addie's favorites too. A useful trick for any hot beverages that I learned when I lived in Japan is to heat up the cup before pouring in the hot drink. All you have to do is pour hot water in your cup and set it aside while you prepare the main attraction. This keeps the cup from chilling your coffee, tea, or cocoa, so things stay warm longer. The recipe for meringued coffee is pretty simple. For six cups of coffee of fair size, take one cup sweet cream whipped light with a little sugar. Put into each cup the desired amount of sugar and about one tablespoon boiling milk. Pour the coffee over these and lay upon the surface of the hot liquid a large spoon of the frothed cream, giving a gentle stir to each cup before serving. I don't think I've ever met any two people who could reach a consensus on the right way to make coffee, and it's a topic on which there have always been a lot of very strong opinions. In the appendices of the various tales of Chetsumoka, you'll see a lot of different coffee recipes from the 19th century. I put them in there to show you that people were just as opinionated on the subject in the Victorian era as they are now. Personally, the way I make my coffee in the morning is to grind two heaping tablespoonfuls of coffee beans add a little less than a pint of cold water, heat, heat it just until it starts to make a really quiet little shh noise, then turn the heat off and let the ground settle for two or three minutes before I pour it out. When the recipe calls for boiling milk, it doesn't mean a full rolling boil, like you would bring water to to boil pasta or something. It just means warm. You want it warm enough that you can kind of tap the bottom of the pan with your hand, but you don't want it so warm you can just stick your whole hand on there. So it's going to taste burnt if you actually outright boil it. You just want to warm it. There are a few different options for whipping the cream. Personally, I'm really fond of my rotary egg beater. It's a nifty little machine. It's very simple, it's very quick. Not everyone has one of these, although if you don't, you should, because they're really cool and useful. Nearly everyone has a wire whisk. Not everyone knows how to whip cream with one. Uh, if you do, great, you can skip this part. <laughs> But just in case you haven't seen how, I'm going to show you this. Because if you've got one of these, I can pretty much guarantee you already know how to use it. With a wire whisk, we're not going to do this motion. It's going to be this motion. It's a lot quicker this way. You can do it this way, but you will grow old and gray whipping your cream. This is nice and quick. Also, the type of cream really makes a difference. It's, in America, cream is usually sold as either light cream or heavy cream. Light cream is really for soups. The heavy cream is the one you want to use for whipping for desserts. 
You can use either one for custards. I find the heavy cream works better. And even amongst heavy creams, not all heavy creams are created equal because the most expensive part of the cream is the butter fat. And so some of the cheaper brands will skim off more butter fat so they can sell that as butter because they make more money that way. Even if the numbers are the same on the different brands, the companies that produce them, they play around with their numbers a little. So if you try different brands of heavy cream, you'll notice a difference in how well they whip up, and it's because of how much butter, th butter fat they have. You want a higher butter fat content for a nice heavy whipping cream, and it has to be really cold. It's best if you chill the bowl as well. I put mine in my ice box before this. Absolutely requisite part of this operation, when you're done beating the cream, lick the beater. <laughs> That's not optional, you have to do that. When you've got everything ready, toss the hot water out of your cup, which should be good and warm by now. For sugar, you've got two different options. You can use granulated sugar or sugar cubes. When I've got company, I use, use sugar cubes so that they won't dribble sugar all over my table. When it's just me, I use granulated sugar because I'm careful with it. And then it's just a matter of adding your coffee, milk, and whipped cream. So there I have my meringue coffee, just like Addie's. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a nice thumbs up, please. And remember to tell your friends about my books. Happy reading.